And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still the hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and if the Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still the hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know He'll lead me safely to that blessed place he had prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and if the
mark the day The clouds in the sky Jesus is near No dark the day The clouds in the sky Jesus is near Jeffrey Z. Palm. I'm blessed to be here. This is another year. And my pastor giving me this privilege to speak this word. Reverend Miller, I love you. Never see or heard from you too much. <laughs> We're still in my prayers, and I know you're praying for me. I just couldn't believe when I came to Sunday school, our pastor was all up in my stuff. <laughs> and I just couldn't help but tell him when he got finished how he was all in my method. And Sister Johnson, I told her, I couldn't hold it to myself. I had an encounter with God in a bowling alley. Can you believe in the bowling alley I had an encounter with God? He gave me confirmation on my message. You know why and how? There was a man in the bowling alley one hour competitors, and he was passing out flyers talking about how the prophets was saying that Jesus is about to return. 
And I was talking to a, another friend at the bowling alley, and I said, you know, Jesus said that no man knows the hour or the day except God. And he's in charge. And I just put it, he just put it in my spirit that it was a confirmation for my message. In chapter 6 of Proverbs, there are six things that God hates. And the one that stands out for me is God hates a lying tongue. And people say, well, you know, it's just a little lie, a little white lie. But a lie is a lie. And a sin is a sin. Mm -hmm. And you can't get around that no matter how you try. Mm -hmm. God has been that good to you. He's been good to me. Amen. I see all of you, knowing most of you, and how God has brought you this far. Amen. And I've been brought this far because of God. He never left me or forsake me. And my worst is out. He had been a comfort to me. He'd been a joy to me. And he'd been my supplier. I'm just thanking the Lord and my Savior and the Father of, all, of us all. It had been some rough time in the last two years with this pandemic, with all these masks you had to wear and places you couldn't go and all this stuff about politics and the people don't want to get their shots and they say, you know, all this crazy stuff. I remember when I was a kid in grade school, we had polio and we had to get a shot in elementary school. Y'all wasn't even here. Many of you never could even imagine. But all these people were so caught up that they don't want to get their shot. I don't want to get no shot. It would be worse than this and that. I had my shot over four months ago. I didn't have no reaction from it. I just took it like a man and went on out the building. and say, whatever it is, it is. All right. There are 66 books in the Bible, 39 and 27. 39 in the Old Testament and 29 and 27 in the New. But the statement that I'm about to bring is about the love of God. And if you would, take your Bible, because I'm still old school. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and true. Go to the 14th chapter of John. In the 6th verse, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto me. No man cometh unto me except by the Father. Amen? Amen? And I want you to go to another scripture. In Romans 10, Romans 10 chapter, and it reads, But what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thine heart. 
that is the word of faith, which is which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess, un confession is made unto salvation. Amen? Amen. What I'm about to state in my message, facing the truth. Facing the truth. God has been good to all of us. Blessing upon blessing. The disciples and the world that was before didn't have this book. Didn't have nothing to read, but they heard from God. And God is a truth God. The Bible, the dictionary says that it's a fact that it's true. And you can believe it no matter what. Amen. This, these, uh, sorry, Deacon Hawkins was in teaching Sunday school and he made a statement. Every perfect, perfect good and come from God, from above. Rev made a statement when he was teaching on the wealth. And he said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And this is what we all do. We come short of the glory of God. We always saying, I don't have no sin. But the Bible says, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar and the truth ain't in you. Yeah. And you can count it all in your mind and in your heart that you can say that you are innocent, but the world stands guilty before God. None of us can escape except through Jesus Christ, right. except that he gets his blood and you begin to get born again. We're talking about salvation. We're talking about the love of God. We're talking about lying. We're talking about cheating. We're talking about stealing. Yes, yes. And all of us have some shortcomings. Mm -hmm. 66 books, and I have not read them all. And I have not even understood them all. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have a problem pronouncing the name of them all. When I was saying, I was talking to another member, and I was thinking about Reverend Johnson and the thing. And he said, you know, all the prophets, all the people that God had put forth to do his will and to do his bidding, they had flaws too. They always had some flaws in their system. Because we all come short of the glory of God. People say, oh, you're just making an excuse. No, we all come short of the glory of God. We can't even compete with one another because somebody gets envious and jealous and all these things in that system. Satan told Eve that we should never die. And he told her, well said, he only told her the whole, the half truth. You might live for 500 years, but you're going to surely die. Well, preach that message. No matter how long you live, you're going to surely die. But you ought to know where you're going when you surely die. It's been too much hell down here to go to any place other than heaven. And I don't know about you, but I've been through enough in 79 years. And if I live to get another year older, 
I'll be a, a miracle walking, because I don't even think so. I got many issues, but I've been blessed by God to overcome them. I believe that his word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be your helper in the midst of the storm. I'll be your way maker. I'll be your go between because I love you that much. He loves us all that much. Looking beyond our faults in spite of. And we all got faults. You say, oh, I, I don't have a whole lot of issues. Oh, yes, you do. You just don't want to face the truth. You don't want to face the truth. You don't want to face the truth by your, even about yourself. And you look in the mirror. I was saying to my own self a few years ago, even before my wife died, I said, who, who am I? Who really am I? And I even stumbled with that my own self. Who am I that God should care for me, that saved a wretch like me? Right. I've done some stuff. I ain't shame, I'm, I'm ashamed of it. But God, the, what? He removed that guilty stain. Amen. He removed that guilt that I was carrying. He removed that shame that I was carrying because he loved me that much. You know how I know? Because of this word. Right. This word right. told me he loved me. Amen. He spanked me sometimes. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. If you don't get spanked by the word, you ain't reading it well. You ain't reading it well. If you don't get spanked by the word of God, you're not reading it well. But the Bible said that he chastened his believers. If you don't, if you don't want to chasing me, get your butt spanked. You'll find out. But he loved you that much. He even made a way that if you just call upon his name, just call upon his name and believe in your heart, you can be saved. I had a problem even in Bible study. And I said, well, I, I, I have a problem. People don't go to church. The stadiums are full. The, the, the baseball, the football players, and, and the football be pointing to the sky and all this. And I said, who are they pointing to? <laughs> and people say, the man upstairs. I, I said, well, who is the man upstairs? Do you know his name? He got many names. But do you know his name? I believe in God, but I have trouble with Jesus. I said, what? <laughs> you believe in God and you have trouble with Jesus? How can you be? How can you be that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the same one, and you got a problem with Jesus? I got a problem with the church. Them hypocrites. I say the church is the hospital. That's why you need to come in here. Because you can't do it by yourself. You can care all you want. You, you can't do it by yourself. We are all sinners. Saved by the grace of God. Through his mercy. Through his loving kindness. Through his blood, we're saved. Yeah. You're not going to go to heaven by yourself. All right. And people say, oh, I, I just wish Jesus would come quickly. I say, no, don't, don't you say that. <laughs> you don't know who's going to get cut off. God knows. He knows everything about this world. He knows everything about you. Even the words he knows all the hairs on your head. He knows you're up rising and you're setting down. God knows. The words say, 
His praises shall continually be in my mouth because he's been that kind of God. I've talked to so many people in my Christian walk, and I haven't been walking in the light all the time. I've had some stumbling. I had some problems in my life, not just with people, but in my own self. Because I have not been that kind of preacher sometimes. We all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We all got faults. And don't believe that anybody said that they're perfect. Because there's nothing perfect but Christ. Right. Nothing right. perfect but the Father. All right. But even when Jesus was told by his disciples that your mother wants you, he said, well, who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my brother? Except them that do the will of my father. Amen. But who are you that God has let you live this long to see what you have been through this time in your life? And all of us have been through some tough time or we're going to get some tough time. You're not going to escape but God been that kind of God. He's been faithful. He's been honest. He's been true. God is not a liar that he don't, to be a man. And God has no turning in shadow. And they say there's no shadow of turning in him. He is faithful and just to forgive us for all our faults if we ask him. Some people don't want to ask you. I don't know why do you not want to ask holy God and Jesus to forgive you for your sins that you can be saved. I don't need him. But who in the world don't need you? Who in the world don't need you? I don't, the, the money can't save you. And we say, and we have said it, and many people have said it, good people don't go to heaven. Right. Save folks do. All right. All right. You could say, ah, ah, ah. His father used to say back in the day that dogs and cats don't have no sin, but they go going to heaven. <laughs> we don't know that either. Well, God gave these creatures that we could love and share with, our, with them. And they comfort us. People talk about, you always talking about your dog. <laughs> I say, I ain't got nobody home but my dog. <laughs> and I love him. Get down on the floor with him and all that stuff. He's a picky eater. But he loves me. He wakes me up in the morning, and I know that I, it's a God-blessed day that I've been feeling this good in all these years. I've been all types of things that I've been going through in my life, but God has brought us all through them. Amen. All of you. Amen. Amen. All of you. And I heard some people's story in this church. And if this church had members that left here, this wouldn't be whole, this sanctuary wouldn't even hold them. They'd be outside around on the parking lot, the people that have left here. They want, they want some hooping. They want some jumping up and down. They want some hallelujah, Holy Ghost power. But you need the word right. of God. Amen. You need the strength of God. Amen. You need the hope of God. Yes. God gives us grace. My wife said, before she even passed, many years, God will give me grace to live and God will give me grace to die. Mm -hmm. 
And I believe that. For the word says that. God will take care of his own. When, when I just look at this word and I was saying, man, I don't know. I've been in the bullpen so long. I don't know if I can come out. And I did get overwhelmed. Now, I want to tell you the truth. I was praying to the Holy Spirit, and I was praying so hard that he would give me the courage and the measures. I didn't even come out the house yesterday, and I felt something on the inside. But it was in my thought process because I knew God will answer your prayer. Amen. And when I came in here, I got overwhelmed. My heart was pounding. I couldn't keep still. I was sweating because rare was all in my message. And I said, Lord, you are truly faithful to your word. Yes. You are truly faithful beyond our even imagination. You are truly faithful. Whatever we may ask or think, yes. you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Yes. I love God and I got forth beyond measure when he had given me his word. He has given me the hope. And when you don't have no hope, what is you? What are you like when you don't have no hope? I had a message years ago, hope beyond the grave. Hope beyond the grave. And that's what I got. This world can't keep me down. Death can't defeat me because right, I know it's hope beyond the grave. Mm -hmm. This old body is going to turn to dust one day. Somebody might even dig up my bones if they can find them. <laughs> because I want to tell you, I'm not going to put no whole lot of money in the grave. I don't believe in that. This body ain't nothing but a shell. And I can let somebody look over it and cremate it or whatever. I'll be on my way to glory right. before the furnace hit me. Right. I guarantee you. <laughs> well, I tell you, you say, oh, well, why, why you don't put no money in the great Because I'm going to donate my body to sign. <laughs> Do you understand that? I'm going to donate my body to the time. Somebody's going to pick it over my body. But it won't be me. Because I'll be on my way to glory. All right. or the Bible said it'll be absent from the body. It'll be present with the Lord. All right, yeah. I got the hope for from my, from my, my spirit man. Mm -hmm. For one of these days, I'll be with him. I see my loved one that confessed Christ. Because the Bible says it's best to be in the first resurrection than the last. But when you're in the last resurrection, you're going to be somewhere around the throne of God. And you believe it? God got another side. People are always talking about God is love, but God got another side. You just read it in Romans 12. Huh? Can you understand that you read it in Romans 12? God will repay. God will got wrath. God got another side, and you can't escape it. Huh? Amen, Reverend Paul. <laughs> Amen, Reverend Paul. You can't escape it. Even, even, even Paul said, if we neglect 
so, so great a salvation, how can we escape? Even Paul says that. And even Rev said Paul had, was, a, was a persecutor of the church. He was a silly, serious killer. And God saved him to do his work, to do his bidding, to leave us his word. Who can love us this much? And he said in his word, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believed in him shall not perish, but ever, ever have eternal life. God is a good God. And I'm not ashamed of his gospel. I'm not ashamed. And I would want to tell it everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. But well, one of these days, I'll be going home. One of these days, you won't see me no more. But I appreciate my members and friends that have known me that will not forget me. For well, I love you, and I care for you, and I pray for you. But even when I'm down, I'm up. And sometimes when I think I'm up, I'm down. <laughs> but God still is faithful yeah. and just. Yeah. And loves all of you like a, he does me. For I was saying to myself, like Paul said, O wretched man, who shall deliver me yeah. from this bondage of flesh? Oh, wretched man, but God says, I love you in spite of. God bless you.